Hello guys, uh, welcome to Screencast on Anatomy and Physiology. Tonight's topic is going to be looking at cardiac output. Now basically we finished cardiac output in our last section of work and we looked at specifically the definition of cardiac output, the values at rest of maximal and maximal, and then what happens to cardiac output when you start to exercise. And we looked at the fact that obviously when you start to exercise, the volume of blood that is ejected from the heart per minute is going to increase. Now that today's lesson is going to go on to a topic, so a new topic, and the new topic basically looks like this. So you're going on to here, and what it is, is we have to look at the concept of the redistribution of cardiac output during exercise. So cardiac output, just as I said earlier, is the volume of blood ejected from the heart per minute. Now basically, during exercise, there is a massive sea change in the distribution of that blood, because a certain places in our body need it more than others. So for example, when you're sat down on a chair, okay, you will have an equal distribution of blood going to you know, your heart, your kidneys, sorry, kidneys, liver, uh, other internal organs, very little going to your muscle cells because you don't need them because you're sat down. As soon as you stand up and start to run, straight away, your body senses that you need to redistribute blood to the working muscles because the working muscles e.g. the leg muscles are the muscles that need them now what I'm going to do is talk you through how physiologically that happens now luckily it's very similar to what you've done before in relation to neural control of heart rate basically in order to redistribute cardiac output which also is called vascular shunt okay this is what happens so basically proprioceptors first step the first part of it is the neural control section so proprioceptors detect an increase in movement when you start to run, baroreceptors detect an increase in blood pressure when you start to run, and chemoreceptors detect an increase in carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen when you start to run. These three things happen and the information is sent to the vasomotor control centre which is located in the medulla oblongata as is the cardiac control centre. Now you might want to make a little note of this, vasomotor control centre okay it's responsible for changing the width of blood vessels okay and it's also responsible for something called vascular shunt so can you make sure you have that down vaso motor control center is responsible for controlling the width of vessels so v for vessels okay and it's also responsible for something called vascular shunt vascular shunt is basically the redistribution of cardiac output during exercise it's another term for it so how does this happen then? So when the vasomotor control center receives this information, it basically stimulates something called vasodilation of the arterioles and precapillary sphincters which supply muscle to the working muscles, blood blood to the working muscles. Now I'm going to explain that very slowly again now. So what happens? Information from the receptors sent into the vasomotor control center. Now what happens is basically the vasomotor control center there are two key vessels, and the only vessels that you're allowed to talk about are the arterioles and precapillary sphincters. Now, these vasodilate. Vasodilation is another word for widening. If your pupils are dilating, they are getting bigger. So, because you're exercising, the two vessels, the arterioles and precapillary sphincters that are supplying blood to the working muscles, need to open wider, which then means that more blood can travel to the working muscles that need them. On the flip side of that, when you start to exercise, the vasomotor control center also stimulates this concept of vasoconstriction. If something constricts, it gets smaller. Of the same vessels, but this time the vessels are not supplying the muscles, they are supplying the non-essential organs, e.g. the kidney and the liver, because the kidney and liver do not need the blood, the oxygenated blood, at that point, because we are running, so our muscles need it, therefore, that it constricts the arterioles and precapillary sphincters supply in the lungs, uh, the kidney, the liver. It gets rid of those. It, it takes the blood away. It tightens so the blood can't travel through. But on the other hand, it vasodilates the arterioles and precapillary sphincters supplying blood to the working muscles. This is the concept of vascular shunt. And this is how we redistribute cardiac output during exercise. Receptors, vasomotor control center, Stimulate vasodilation, widening of the two vessels, supplying your muscles with blood. On the flip side, because of the fact that the, uh, the precapillary sphincters and arterioles are widening to the working muscles, the, the precapillary sphincters and arterioles that are supplying the non-essential 
things such as the kidney, the liver, they vasoconstrict. And that is key for this lesson. Your screencast notes need to be better, some of you, than they were today. Okay, these are the first three things you would need to have. You would need to have this. You need to say that this, what this is, and then also link it to vascular shunt, controls vascular shunt. Then you need to make sure you know that the VCC causes vasodilation. That needs to be in there. What does it mean? These two vessels supply in the working muscles. And then on the flip side, the other side to it is this. Okay. You will need in your answer everything on this slide needs to be into your notes. And you need to make sure that you have made good aligning questions to this. And we'll have a look at it again tomorrow. Thank you.